Welcome to Math in a Box with Susan Johnsey. In our lesson today, we will learn to add and subtract integers. Integers are our positive and negative whole numbers and zero. We can really add and subtract any real numbers with these three steps that we will learn today. The main reason students cannot succeed in Algebra 1 first semester is their confusion with adding and subtracting integers. Adding and subtracting integers can be confusing. When adding integers, we sometimes subtract. When subtracting integers, we sometimes add. In school, students learn to add first, and most do quite well with that. But a few days later, they learn to subtract, and there the confusion begins. They even begin to miss the addition. Today I will teach you about my three steps to adding and subtracting. You will learn to use my three rules of placing the numbers into the correct boxes and then you will be able to add and subtract. You will rarely ever hear me though say add and subtract. Uh, once you know how to put the numbers into the box, you will naturally know what to do to add or subtract. Right now we're going to begin with the two rules for signs. There are two rules to learn. All numbers have a sign on their left. If there's not a sign on the left, then it's a positive number. Let's look at this expression that I have written here on the right. The 3 does not have a sign on its left, so it is considered a positive number. The 5 on its left is a negative, so the 5 is considered to be a negative number. The 2 also on its left is a negative sign, so it's a neg considered a negative number. The 4 has a positive sign on its left side, so the 4 is considered a positive number. I'm sure that was relatively easy for you. Let me show you a few other examples though that might make you think a little more. Let's look at negative 2 plus 3 and 3 minus 2. Now yes I did say minus there instead of a negative. It is okay to say minus 2, but please don't say take away. We do not need to use take away. These two expressions that I've written here are really the same. If you'll look, the 2 in the first expression is negative. The 2 in the second expression is also negative. The 3 in the first expression is positive, and so is the 3 in this expression. Now remember, it doesn't have a sign really written, but if a number does not have a sign, then it is positive. These two expressions really mean the same thing. Let's look at negative 5 minus 8. Negative 5 minus 8. Both of these numbers have a negative on their left side, so both of these are considered to be negative numbers. What about 12? Take away, oops, I'm not supposed to say take away, 12 minus 14. The 12 is positive, and the 14 is negative. On the left, there's a negative on the f of the for, for the 14. What if there are two signs? Sometimes your book or your teacher may write two signs on the left side of a number. I cleaned the screen off a little bit to give us some more room. We have a plus, and then we have a negative 7. Or if we have a plus, and a negative 7 again, but we don't write the parentheses. Those really mean the same thing. I could also write a negative and then a plus 7. Or I can write that with parentheses, a negative, parentheses, plus 7. Now all four of these expressions have one positive and one negative. And all four of these expressions are the same. They mean the same thing. They all equal negative 7. So I tell my students sometimes when you have double signs, we have a plus, then right immediately we have a minus, or we have a 
minus and then a plus, if you have double signs, you can ignore extra positives. Just take your pencil and cover that positive up. And you can also leave off the parenthesis then. Now we can never ignore negatives. Remember, we can ignore only extra positives. Let's look at some now that have a negative and then another negative. What does this mean? If you've studied algebra before, I found that this rule is one rule that the students always seem to remember. This is equal to a positive 6. Yes. Even if I write a longer expression, I'm going to write a 3 minus a minus 8. Minus a minus 8, we have two negatives, double negatives, always change to a positive. Please just write the positive one time and throw the negatives completely away. Now you may want to know why is this true? So let's look at this. It's a little, just a little bit of logic will tell you why this is true. A negative 6 can also be called the opposite of positive 6. I'm sure you know that negative 6 and positive 6 are opposites. Also, now remember that the negative 6 can be called minus 6. So we can say negative 6, we can say opposite of 6, or we can say minus 6. All three of those expressions mean the same thing. Now let's look again at a negative, negative 6. This first negative, rather than call it negative, I'm going to call it opposite. So this becomes the opposite of negative 6. What is the opposite of a negative 6? The opposite of a negative 6, I'm sure you know, is a positive 6. In this first step, we have learned the two rules for signs. All numbers have a sign on their left. We can never ignore a negative. So a negative, negative 6, remember, is a positive 6. Also remember, if I write 10 minus 7, that's the same as writing minus 7 plus 10. These are the same expression. If I write 6 minus 8. That's the same as the expression negative 8 plus 6. You see I did have to add the plus on the 6. It, it, it was not written on the first expression, but of course you know the 6 is positive. It's positive in both places. The 8 is negative in both places. These are the same expressions. And if I write a minus plus 2, or if I change it to a plus minus 2, both of these mean the same thing also. They both mean negative 2. And the fact about not ignoring the negatives, we know that a negative, negative 7 would become the opposite of a negative 7, which is positive 7s. These, this is the first rule. There are two more rules for you to learn how to add and subtract integers, and there is where we will learn to use the boxes, the two boxes. Because YouTube will not let my videos be longer than 10 minutes, the other two steps are taught in a second video. It has the same name, and it just calls it Part 2, so I hope you will go and find that also. You need to finish this so that you know how to add and subtract integers. I hope you've enjoyed this and have learned a little bit today. You can always find me on the web at mathinabox.com or Google me, Susan Johnsey. Thanks.